Hi, today's good person to know is Rob Halliday Steen. He's founder of Billion by Post, and this video is about how he managed to build a hundred million pound business in four years. He basically wanted to buy some gold and he found the process really difficult and that's where he spotted his golden opportunity. He says, don't be fooled by Dragon's Den. It's not about inventing something new and that the best companies are those that simply do things better. He looked at how the competition were doing it and by that I mean his competitors in the US and Europe and he particularly liked how the Germans were doing it and wanted to do something similar in the UK. He needed to differentiate his business by giving excellent customer service, transparent pricing and a really good way website followed by strong marketing. He took a pragmatic approach to planning his business and says the only thing that you really need to focus on is how much you're going to spend but to also factor in living costs because it might be a while before you make some money. Neil's first job was to win over the respect of his customers and so he made a real feature of that in his website by having a review section and made the point of never deleting negative feedback saying it just keeps the website authentic. He then had to win over the respect of his suppliers and said it's about delivering on your promises and made a real point of saying when you're working with somebody in an organisation it's not the whole organisation that you need to worry about it's that one person, the supplier that you're dealing with and to manage that relationship because if anything ever is going down, you want that supplier to call you first. Neil said it's also about the respect of your colleagues as well and that if you have a bad day, they're going to have a bad day. So always be upbeat or try to be upbeat before you go into the office so that you can have an upbeat team. He also said it's about building a brand and having a consistent message and I really liked his tip that he gave and that's to play to your own strengths, do what you're good at and get people on board for the things that you're not good at. I hope you enjoy this video, really sorry about the sound quality as usual but there's nothing I can do about it, I really am sorry, I just thought he was a really good person for you to know um, how Rob managed to make a hundred million pound business in four years, I mean it is quite staggering really. I hope you enjoy it and thank you for watching. So the spot in a golden opportunity, Dragon's Den has a lot to answer for. It gives people the idea that a good business has to be a unique idea. It's not true at all. Most businesses that are successful do something well or better than someone else. And it can be any of the most successful businesses be Google, eBay, you know, all these businesses were original. And what they did was they took a good idea and did it better. How did I go about spotting a golden opportunity? I was looking to buy some gold personally and put this in a backdrop of 2008 banking crisis. Um, RBS was on the edge, Merrill Lynch had just gone bust. I went round on foot, had a look around a few places and started to make some contacts. Um, from that and a bit of good luck, um, I made a good contact with someone who runs the UK or Birmingham office of a major European refiner. He agreed to sell me just some gold personally uh, for like trade rates and then I started to spot an opportunity that I thought was, was there. This was sort of first glimmers of an opportunity and I was trying to work out is there a business there and is there a business that I can do with my skills and resources and ability. I then um, went on to have a look at what the German and US market were doing especially Germany is way ahead when it comes to investing in physical gold coins and bonds. So I had a good look at the German market and I saw that there were businesses doing it successfully online and they were pretty big businesses. So I could see the model does work, or at least it was working in Germany and in the US. So I could see, um, and I think that's a good advice to take a look at other countries, often there's some really useful insights to get. I've seen an opportunity, I decided that there was, you know, it could work. How was I going to differentiate my business and make it work? And I focused on three key three things really. Opportunity is way, way around for long, and I think that's for sure. And if you see an opportunity, um, first, you really do need to assess it's a good opportunity, because normally the rubbish opportunities are the ones that are still lying around. I take a bit of a pragmatic approach to business planning, and I think. Often you'll be told to forecast what your sales are going to be in month three or 12 months on. Um, you haven't got a chance, to be honest. The bank might want to know that, someone might want to know that if they're lending you money. But they're not going to believe it anyway, because you've got no chance of knowing really what your, you know, what your sales are going to be, how the business is going to grow. What you should know and what you can do is how much you're going to spend, because that's the only thing that really matters when you start out. And knowing how much time and money you're prepared to risk on this venture. When I started this business, I didn't know if it would work. I thought it would work, 
but I had other things to do. I wasn't going to spend the rest of my life trying to get something to work if it wasn't working. So I said, I'll give you six months and about £20,000 is what I put into it. And I knew from the outset, if it's not walking in space by then, I'm going to give up and do something else. Because life's too short to be fighting something that isn't working. Don't underestimate your cost of living. People often think what's the business cost. You've got to support yourself through that period. And it's going to be even in a business like mine, you're going to be making any money for a year or so. It's going to be quite a while before you make any money, so you need to work out how you're going to support yourself. I do think the business is key to making a successful business. The first step was really about winning customers. Um, customers' respect. And that was simply around honesty, integrity, and being genuinely nice. Do transparent reviews. So a lot of websites now have transparent reviews. We did, we like to get pretty early. We've now got, I think, 7,500 in our vending customer reviews. The other thing we don't do is try and remove negative ones, which I know is pretty commonplace in e-commerce. We've always left them up, we've always left comments and explained ourselves, because it's about being genuine and truthful, and I think consumers are savvy enough to know. You can't serve 50,000 customers without having a few problems, but some customers are a pain. The next part, and I think probably is often underestimated, is about winning suppliers respect. I think every successful business depends on really good relationships with their suppliers. Number one is delivering on your promises. If you're dealing with suppliers, you want to under-promise and over-deliver. If you go in fairly conservatively and consistently beat your forecasts and targets for them, they're going to want to support your business. The other bit is, you don't have a relationship with a business, it's with individuals working in there. So it's about developing one-to-one -one relationships with those individuals in that business. It's about being visible, hands-on, and aware of your impact on others. And I think the aware of your impact on others is quite a scary bit of growing a business. When you suddenly realise, if you go into the office in a mood one morning, which happens to all of us, um, suddenly you find everyone else in the office in a mood. The brand is about consistent messaging based on the truth. My advice in terms of setting up a business would be playing to your strengths. I think one of the reasons we don't so well is I focused on what I'm good at. I brought people in for bits where I'm not so good. All businesses that are successful are based on the owner's strengths. And I'm really just focusing and playing on those.